All right, welcome, welcome everybody to another bonus session where I get, to, I love introducing my friends to the Wolf Pack because uh, I know so many awesome people out there, very, very fortunate. So today I brought on my buddy, Jeremy Wenger, who's the owner of the Tiny Home Plug LLC, and he invests in alternative development space. And so he works on projects as small as his backyard, up to 80 plus acre developments for residential mixed use and commercial developments. Uh, he's really passionate about creating communities with a purpose of creating win-wins for all those involved. And he's making waves in the space right now because he's helping equip and grow uh, with, with people who are on the same mission as him and who align with just getting rid of this housing crisis that's uh, not just plaguing the United States, but it's a global problem right now. So, and at the same time, creating revenue. So everybody wins. So Jeremy, good to have you here, buddy. Good to be here, man. I appreciate you. So it's uh, it's good to see you. It's been a little while since I've seen you in person, but, uh, you know, we'll, we'll take Zoom. We can take what we can get these days. But uh, Jeremy, the uh, I love what you're doing and the stage is yours. So if you want to share, you've got that ability. Do whatever you need to do. It's all yours. Well, yeah, it's it's so kind of like rewinding when you and I first met. Holy cow. Like how many years has it been? Like what, five, six years almost? Yeah, it feels, oh. like, it feels like a lifetime ago. Yeah. <laughs> It's like, but it was, it was just like yesterday, you know, yeah, and it's like, a it's, lot it's of changes just, since then and not oh, in, in the world, but in, in the things that you're doing compared to when we first met. Oh my gosh. It's like, if you had asked me when we met that I'd be doing what I am today, there's no way I'd be like, huh? You know, like, and just, you know, and that's where, you know, kind of like just kind of rewinding all the way back to, you know, there's a lot of folks rolling in just to tell a little bit about my background and yeah, just uh, just to leave with that because you know my the passion like I eat, sleep, and breathe affordable housing when it comes to alternative materials and how can we get creative, you know because you know I, I'm originally from Huntsville, Alabama, and you know born and raised here, and it's interesting because um, you know my so just kind of share a little bit. This is going to get a little heavy for a little bit, guys. My my dad was murdered when I was 18. When I contemplated suicide when I was 16, but my parents divorced when I was 10. I'm the oldest of three siblings, and my I was that sibling that was pawned between my parents and my dad was the evil parent mm. i say that because you know there's a lot that when it comes down to with my mom she didn't know about what was happening behind the scenes with my dad is that she kicked me out of his house to go or her house to go live with him to learn a lesson i hated him for a lot of this happening but i learned work ethic and you know i woke up some mornings at 50 degree weather because he's a very heavy set guy he's like you'll get over it you'll be fine but it's like you know a lot of stuff working with him that you know as far as like within the tree industry you know 60 percent of his business was logging and, you know, it's interesting because with him, I learned work ethic, but there's also a lot of stuff that I learned on with working with people. And, you know, my dad was that kind of personality is very porcupine. You know, we all know those different personality types of a turtle mindset and a, and a porcupine mindset. And so um, that all led up into, you know, contemplated suicide. And that's when I received Christ in my heart that, that day. And that set me on a path to, and that was when I, that's when God called me to those who were considered a lost cause. Yeah, everyone's got their faith, and that's okay. But like at the end of the day, I'm I'm called to those who are considered a lost cause, those who would just be thrown aside. But the biggest thing is like, how can we make things work with like for them? You know, and that's kind of going back to the story. You know, over those two years, my dad and I repaired a relationship, but then he actually he was you know he was he was killed in cold blood, and now it's been even though it's been a 12 year cold case here in Huntsville, um, it's interesting because you know what grief taught me was also how to be present. You know, I'm very passionate about the trades, and I've been in the trades for over 12 years along with productizing companies. That's actually how Mike and I met. And, uh, you know, and I was, you know, really, uh, Porcupine is just, you know, someone who's very like, aggressive. They don't want to, they don't want to deal with anything. They're very, you know, my dad was the kind of like hard-headed personality. I was just one of the chat you kids asked was Porcupine. Uh, so Porcupine is somebody who's very, you know, they're on, 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 they get offended easily. They get very defensive and they, they cut you before you have a chance to cut them, even if that's not even your intention. And so that's where having to, yeah, so having to learn to navigate a lot of that, even growing up with my dad, there was a lot of physical, there's a lot of abuse behind the scenes. So there's a lot of guns, guns, drugs, and women that were behind the scenes that learning how to, you know, you know, on the front end, my dad was very flashy, but then also behind the scenes, he beat the crap out of me. And there's a lot of stuff that I had to re unlearn re preparing that relationship with him. But that was, what's interesting is that, you know, after all that happened, all that took place after his passing and then going into the trades and productizing companies and doing what I've what I've done for over a better part of a decade um, is now it's like with the passion because you know back when I contemplated suicide I went to rehab 
I went to an independent living facility uh, down in Mobile, Alabama, off of Newman Road, off of New Man Road. And ironically enough, um, I went to go speak in Louisiana on stage uh, about my last month. I went back through that facility that I went to when I was at there when I was there at 717. And it's interesting because the guy that I went back there to go speak life into these guys uh, that were there, you know, two years after I got out, he actually bought the facility. And I, you know, I went back through there just to see what, what was going on. And I remember walking the barracks of where I was at. And, you know, I, you know, there's a lot of stuff that happened in there. You know, it's, 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 it's interesting because, you know, I remember I was actually walked through where I slept at when I was 17. It's like, now we get a chance to come back, reverse engineer and, you know, build different developments that, you know, I was involved in a lot of gang fights and a lot of different things that took place. You know, there was a lot of different, you know, there were a lot of different things that were happening in there that where I was that guy that had everyone drop their flags and we all prayed together at the end of the day. You know, and it's interesting because now we look at workforce housing and productizing companies and all these different, you know, story points come together really quick is that, you know, at the end of the day, like there's a lot of things that I've worked with people in real estate, like Mike, you know, like, like Mike and everybody else who's in, in real estate investing. There's a lot of things that, you know, productizing your business is hard. Uh, and I was that CMO, COO behind the scenes and helping to create time. And one of the biggest things is, my, my mission, you know, from where I come from, product, I'm product of a good counselor, somebody who poured life into me. There's a mental health mission here. It's not just to be able to create really cool buildings, but also how can we create something that has a mental health mission behind it that decreases the recidivism rate, right? And so it's like, how can we help people have a sense of ownership? Because here's the kicker. Every investor that I've worked with over for, with over for 10 years reason why they hate like, a lot of times, you know, there's people that love affordable housing. Every investor is, you know, built, is built different. And that's totally fine. Yeah. You know, but we're doing a lot of stuff within the affordable housing space to help the numbers work for the investors. So not just now, but also the long, long haul, you know, and also on the voucher side too, you know, we work with a lot of nonprofits or opportunity zone funds, um, you know, private capital, you name it, you know, it's like, how can we get as creative as possible to solve a number problem, but create privacy security and also to ownership? in a way that makes sense. Because at the end of the day, it comes down to the materials, it comes down to a bunch of stuff. And that's where, you know, over over you know, over 10 years of working with investors, you know, anybody in real estate, really truly agents, brokers, you name it, uh, everyone's got their preference and there's no shame in that at all. Because here's the thing, if you're not, if you're not like, let's just full disclaimer on affordable housing, if you ain't built to handle the rough edges, don't do it. Don't do it. Yeah, just everyone do it. You're doing everyone a disservice if you do that, because that's how their slumlords are created. You know, that's, you know, affordable housing is not a cash grab, even though there's great money on it. But when it comes down to it, now it's like with where, you know, all of that being said, you know, there's so much that's been taking place as far as like with working with people over the past 10 years and with investors and brokers, anyone in real estate builders, you know, I've been in the trades for, for literally half of my life, uh, over half of my life. And it's interesting because, um, yeah, I know I said it like I'm 60, but still I'm going to be 31 next month. But it's like, even then though, um, you know, it's like at the, at that same token, it's interesting because all the stuff that tried to kill me and destroy me is what pours into this passion. I eat, sleep and breathe a way to create real estate deals that are a win-win from the material side. And also to, you know, being able as far as the site plans and being able to find ways to make it work. And it's interesting because, you know, every investor, a lot, what I every, so a lot, a good chunk of investors are like, I don't know how zoning inspection, labor cost. Holding costs, all these different things that go into all of that as far as ground up construction, even to rehabbing and value add strategies. A lot of times it's like, man, it's like the contractor walks off halfway off the job, right? It's like, how many of like show of hands, right? Like, oh my gosh, it's like all that stuff that happens. And it's like, how can we pull all these loose ends together to help with when it comes down to the tiny home space? Because tiny homes are fantastic, they're just a marketing term. But at the end of the day, when it comes down to like ways to, you know, as far as alternative materials, when it comes down to sit panel technology, modular containers, you know, manufactured homes, you know, tilt up concrete panels too. That's old school. Yeah, you know, it's, it's not very popular these days, but it's still good in other countries, you know. And it's like, how can we get creative on, you know, but on the material side to make sense for the investors and be able to get things going? But also there's a big, big, big gap when it comes to the funding side. That's why we kicked off a sister company, uh, Tiny Home Funding. But it's like, how can... How do we pull all of it together? You know, it's like there's just so much opportunity that's out here and it's overwhelming. But you know, it's like we're, you know, we that's why that's where Tiny Home Play was was born and birthed because you know there's a lot of gaps in the material side and also pitching it to the municipalities and the permitting uh, components of it. 
but also to being able to you know, coordinate with lenders and to be able to, to get ready and pitch that to people. But that's, and it's like, all of that came back to, it's like, how can we, how can we help people who, who are overlooked? How can we help people that, that really need it? You know, especially, and I'm talking about the investors, those who want to step into real estate. Yeah. It's like, how can we create generational wealth? Like what Mike talks about all the time. You know, it's like, how can we really make it to where, you know, it's a huge win because at the end of the day, I was that guy. You know, it's like, the reason why we kicked off Tiny Home Plug and everything, the cancel housing crisis mission, literally to cancel the housing crisis is to help equip those who are called to do bigger things in a way that makes the most sense. And it's like, you know, it's, it's awesome, man. We're doing, we're having so much fun. It's so much fun working with people who are mission oriented, legacy driven, and really, really, truly out to do something bigger than just themselves. You know, it's like, yeah, it's not just to have, you know, creative, you know, creative developments that have, you know, self-storage with multifamily and self-storage with workforce housing or whatever the case is, campgrounds, you name it. It's just how how much fun do you want to have, right? And it's like, and there's just so many things that we're doing. And it's just, it's just all driven because, you know, because I want to be able to help equip people. You know, it's one, it's one thing to help, you know, 100,000 100, people directly, right? But it's also too, how do you help 10 million people at once? It's like, how do we, it's like, Connecting with those leaders who are who have that ability and that bandwidth, because Mike and I were just talking about it earlier, bandwidth. <laughs> so, yeah, you know, it's like how can we accomplish something quicker at quality and be able to do something that's not just it's not just going to stand the test of time, but it's also too going to look really amazing and even going up as well. And so, yeah, dude, it's been it's been so much fun. Yeah, you know, just like all this stuff as far as when Mike, when I met you, man, I never would have believed that I'd be doing it these days. Like what we're what's going on, it's just it's absolutely amazing. Like <laughs> it really is. But um, but yeah, I mean, I just want to kind of open the floor, I guess, uh, any questions or these combos, man. I love to, um, I like to just ramble all the time. You know, if we can, I'd love to just be able to open the floor or just have discussions and have a great time. Yeah, well, first of all, I think you're a great example of something that I like to talk about frequently. And that's, you know, a lot of people overestimate what they can get done in a really short period of time, like six months or a year, but they underestimate what they can do in, let's say, five years, which is probably how long it's been since I've seen you. Yeah. And you've come so far, like five years ago, could you have ever imagined some of the things you're doing today? Like probably not even on your radar. Right? I would have laughed at you. I would have been yeah. like, yeah, who do, who do you want to do what? Like, yeah. So for Wolfpack, keep at it. Don't give up. Keep moving forward and your life will be unrecognizable. Uh, just keep plugging away. Um, all right. Any questions for Jeremy so far? So let's let's talk about some of your uh, projects. I know you have like so much on the go. I can't even like my head spins just thinking about how many things you have on the go right now. <laughs> I mean, we're working on some. Um, we've got uh, quadplexes that we're working on for military housing. Um, you know, we're uh, doing sit panel technology for those uh, modular containers in some uh, other parts of Texas as well. Um, yeah. I mean, excuse me, and even too doing a half, you know, half RV part, uh, campground, even half self storage as well. You know, we're doing a a a, a three, and this is what's actually really cool. A lot of a lot of folks who are in the coaching space, you know, or even too that have an educational product, they can build their own retreats. Wink, wink, Mike. Um, but like being able to um, being able to have you know the ability to like like take it from a different angle, like think outside the box, right? You know, like wedding venues are awesome, but also too you need to know this market. Um, it's like, how creative can we get, you know, like to be able to add the, you know, like add the real estate component to certain business models, right? And it's like, when it comes down to, I mean, shoot, building developments for truckers, come on, they're overlooked. Like, no one's thought about that yet. I mean, they haven't done anything about it. Um, you know, it's like, for me, it's like, you know, at the same token too, it's like for foster care housing, you know, and that's, these are, you know, these are things that, you know, just the last two are the hypotheticals, but that need to be done. And that's actually in the works here in uh, Huntsville, um, Team Dead. Salute, but uh, Ralph Huntsville represent. But um, but that's where it's like it's interesting because with the retreats and affordable housing, there's such different process to each one of them. You know, it's fun to make the retreats. You know, it's fun to pre-sell them, pre-market them, do what we need to. Right? It is also it's um uh, it's interesting because when it comes down to um when it comes down to being able to look at look at what the uh boy before the business model and being able to really um to to go through exactly as far as um sorry my computer just like. A little goofy, little headache right here, but um, but when it comes down to like that business model, when I no matter what it is, yeah, it's like how can we how can we work backwards if it's a short term rental, corporate housing, if it's going to be also too, you know, no matter like I mean it could be, I mean midterm stay, right? Yeah, so we're we're doing a lot of that in Vermont. We got some stuff going in for uh, Michigan, Virginia too. 
uh, as well. It's really fun. Um, hang on one second. Mike, can you still hear me? Oh, yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, just making sure my screen just went total dark because I didn't move my mouse. Oh, yeah. like, oh, my gosh. Yeah, yeah. No, it's, a, it's a new computer, so I'm getting the hang of it. But, um, but yeah, no, it's like affordable housing is huge, especially when it comes down to California. Oh, my gosh. It's like and every every county and every state has their different, you know, their different ordinances, right? And so, you know, for a lot of short-term rentals, we're even to the thing behind me, I mean, this is going to be, you know, we're going to be doing, a, you know, an acquisition role and stuff into it and, you know, be able to, like, they're like fix and flippers, right? And even to wholesalers. Gosh, man, you know, if you can find property and do what you need to, I mean, there's so many, there's so many things that you can do that when you mix in a site plan, like from your perspective, if someone comes to you with property and a site plan and way that they've already got stuff mapped out, how much more valuable is that to you? Oh, of course. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, and that's where it gets fun because it's like with everything, I mean, when it comes down to, you know, multifamily, how high do you want to go? Do you want to do class A? I mean, how many square feet do you want to get to? It's like, you know, it's like there's there's so much there's so much need that's out there. I mean, gosh, man, there's we we're working on. Um, I mean, there was um, there were some things that we were able to organize it for Austin, Texas, even too for the Salvation Army. And they shut their doors after 20 years, and you know, a couple phone calls. Oh, you know, temporary housing, you know, and all that. We were able to organize. I mean, a thousand RVs just in case they needed it as a lease option within two phone calls, wow. and, it, and it's like the the whole mission for this man, like it's just. Like we're about to kick off some things in other parts of Texas and you know, of course here in Alabama and Mobile as well. Um, you know, finally made some awesome progress, you know, with uh, with the local municipalities here. And so we're just we're man, there's so much that's that's happening. You know, it's like how can we not just do the immediate developments, but also open the door wider for other people and make that path that much that much more paved for people and that much easier, right? You know. So yeah, it's it's just so much fun, man. Let me try and try to pull my screen back up so I can see the chat if there's any questions. Yep. Yeah, I'm watching the chat for you and we can still see you and hear you. So that's good. That's all that uh, matters. <laughs> what? Uh, yeah. So, I mean, you how, how big is your team? You must have a lot of people obviously supporting you because, like I said, you have so many different things on the go and you, you're making it look really easy. So uh, how do you do it? What's your secret? No, it's just people and systems, man. We have a small but mighty team. Yeah, you know, I've got team managers over the acquisition component uh, for the tiny old funding. We've got overseeing that. I mean, it's just, you know, it's really, you know, that goes back to my, you know, my marketing days and everything else. You know, automation is a love language. So immediately, you know, like with sales and branding and being able to connect all the partnerships together, um, we had a lot of people that, a lot of the um, builders and manufacturers that came to us to be able to seal partnership, which is fantastic. You know, it's also too, we're, Negotiating and you know betting so many different builders and manufacturers, man. It's uh, it's like hey, I've got my what was it one two three four five, six, yeah, about uh, fifteen so domestic and international as well. So yeah, man, it's been it's been growing and it's going to keep growing. Yeah, you know, we're just you know it's a matter of you know put that uh, come up with this process, put the systems in place, delegate. Same thing, rinse repeat, right? And it is annoying to put SOPs. SOPs can be an SOP if you're not, yeah. um, you know. If you don't put them in place and to getting them in place, but yeah. well, trust me, it's going to be a bigger pain if you don't. Oh my gosh. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Once you got, once you got them in place, as long as they're good, then you're, you're hopefully set for a while. Right. Then you just go into maintenance mode. Just keep updating it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so true. So what are some, so I know that you obviously do uh, tiny homes. What do you think, like when it comes to affordable housing, what, what are some of the solutions? Because you mentioned California earlier, which is mm -hmm. of course, crazy expensive and, I don't know if you've been there recently, but when you drive through LA, every overpass, there's people living in tents on these overpasses, like everywhere. It's like massive, uh, massive problem. What do you see as some of the solutions? What, what are some of the things that uh, we should be looking at? Because I'm actually, yeah, and I'm going to have to team up with you as well. I'm teaming up with a, a buddy of mine. I should introduce you. And we're trying to figure out ways to deal with some of this homelessness. And and because uh, it's, it's just crazy everywhere you go these days. And what, what are some of the solutions that you see? One, one of the solutions he sees is 3D printing of homes, mm -hmm. which is really cool. And yeah. we're, we're looking into some of that. What are some of the things that you're uh, working on? Man, sit panel technology. Sit panel technology and tilt-up concrete panels are the top two solutions for California. Which, containers. Explain that because I don't really know what oh, that yeah. is, to be honest. So sit panels are structurally insulated uh, panels. And so, yeah, that tilt-up concrete is just has air create insulation in it. Uh, but tilt sit panels is what they, it's a double sided mag board. They have the, the vapor barrier on each side of it. They come with the insulation. And also some, some of them will actually come with electrical and plumbing, kind of what's already in it. 
So it speeds up the production, like as far as the assembly time on site. That's amazing. The same thing with the tilt-up concrete. Tilt-up concrete is really old school, and there's a lot of other countries that are building that out, and that's where you know, I'm integrating it into to lot, some projects right now. Biggest thing is the contractors and just getting them educated. So it's going to be, you know, tilt-up concrete, you know, it's, it's, uh, it can withstand it's over 200 mile an hour wind load. Uh, the sit panels, you know, wood frame, you know, they, you know, we just make sure we actually have uh, one, two, three, four, uh, three projects right now with sit panel technology. Uh, we're getting across the finish line actually this week. And that's where with California, red tape all day. And it's just the red tape and the zoning. They actually, so there's actually, um, uh, what was it? Um, SB9 was uh, what they just released in January there. Um, I know enough about it just to be a little dangerous, but I'm still studying up on it. But they allow you to, to actually, put two addresses on the same partial and then do kind of like a sub two play almost and allow you to actually have ownership in that. Mm -hmm. And then later on, be able to subdivide it to addresses, but treat it as that. So there's a lot that goes into that, but they actually you too, like in the city in LA, from what I understand, even Sacramento County, uh, they just remove the parking minimums, which is going to make things good or bad. We'll see. But like, that's where, you know, as far as finding land. And then the biggest thing is when it comes to homelessness, like really truly at the end of the day, it's not about just creating something that's just good enough, but also creating something that's going to be not only going to create a sense of ownership, but it's going to create privacy and security because there is so much theft, physical abuse and sexual abuse when it comes to the homeless, homelessness uh, com uh, communities. It's insane. Like that's why if people had a choice to sleep in the car or their shelter, they're going to pick their car. More than likely, nine times out of 10. I've been homeless. I've been there. I know it. Like, it really, at the end of the day, it's like, man, you know, and that's actually, I was actually homeless for a stint between when you and I first met to now. Um, and so we built all the way now. And so and it's interesting because, you know, that's a mindset. You know, a lot of people, especially veterans, that's actually what I was talking to the housing authority here in Huntsville. It's like, we can't just build it out for the vets. We actually have to build it and then present it to them and sell them on it. That's the part that a lot of people miss. It's like, we got to do, took all the boxes off, right? And so the, definitely with land, I mean, that's out there. I mean, we really, it's, you also have to think about accessibility for jobs, right? You have to think about a trade skill because they got to pay your bills too, right? And you got to look at the grants. You um, look at what's available out there. There's a lot that's available, but also too, being able to have boots on the ground does definitely help 100%, which I know that's what you, you practice and preach that like, religiously. But it's like, how can we not only put together all the material side, because 3D printing is fantastic. However, at the same token, it's still fresh. And that's where a lot of times when it comes, I mean, because I love to, like, when it comes to integrating 3D printing, containers, sit panel technology, you know, anything that we can use to speed up the assembly time, fantastic. The biggest thing is because California is so fresh on so many different, well, there, I'll say this, California, I, they've got red tape the size of the Chinese wall, you know, uh, and the Berlin wall as well. It's like, how can we, how, what's the path of least resistance, right? You know, holding cost wise. Uh, but the biggest thing is just making sure that we've got everything, you know, checked off as far as um, permits, you know, and also to, you know, the CCNR of the property. I mean, how the county of rural area is going to be the easiest, but also to, you know, think about resources, right? You know, for them, you know, if they're, they're almost like how they're going to travel to their job. Is their job, can their job be virtual? You know, like doing administrative, running you know, computers, and also to make sure they don't steal anything, but create a, a gamification plan so that, that way it incentivizes them to do better, you know? And that's where it gets interesting because at the end of the day, when it comes down to it, you know, it's a matter of making sure that we've got, you know, the right, um, the right plot and land, but also to the permitting. So that's something I have to look through, but yeah, absolutely, man. I mean, California is fantastic. They need it desperately, but also to the banking is so difficult. They really are, you know, especially when it comes down to the taxes and a bunch of other stuff too. Like they're, they're, they're taking two steps forward on some areas and making, you know, five steps backwards in some other areas. But unfortunately, it was just, you know, it's just a, it comes with land, you know, that's, Part of the territory, no pun intended. So it happens in every state's different. You know, Florida's got its own red tape and uh, kind of stuff too, just like California and New York does too. I mean, we all know these are, you know, some of the hardest states to develop in. So it's just a matter of making sure that, you know, going through the feasibility study and the pro forma on it and you know, make sure that it makes sense, you know, because if it, if the projections don't make sense, but also too, like what it would make it worth it, right? Like what, like let's think on that side. What, what solution based thinking, right? Instead of like, eh, you know, instead of like being problem based thinking. <laughs> so, yeah, that's the biggest thing. Yeah, well, I, I agree. I agree with you about California. I, I love to visit there and I have a lot of friends there, but man, they put red tape on every. Everything's got to be complicated. Like, and it drives me nuts, and that's why I don't do any real estate there. Yeah. Um, so I don't know if this is going to be too personal for you, and if it is, just say so. But I, I'm just curious because I know when I first met you, you were you were going through some struggles and challenges, and then I know you you just mentioned that you went 
homeless. How did you get from homeless in such a short time to where you are right now? Like that is a huge, huge like I said, if it's too personal, uh, we can oh, go. No, you're fine. No, and that's the kicker. Yeah, and that's what I mean. I, I kind of started off with my story, so you're good. Like, you know, my part started off with some pretty heavy, you know, with my, my yeah. dad and all that. So you're, if I start there, you're good. <laughs> yeah, all right. <laughs> you're fine. That's good, buddy. But yeah. um, no, I mean, it was interesting is that, you know, with all of that, you know, the resourcefulness, you know, betting on your gifts, not your weaknesses, right? And, you know, I, I, re- I will never forget this, this saying from Albert Einstein. He said that if a fish is ever judged by its ability to climb up a tree, it'll live its life thinking it's stupid. Never left me. And it's interesting because, you know, when rebuilding, you know, I actually uh, moved back down from Tennessee to, to Alabama. And it's interesting because that's right when I met my life. Like, this lady loves me when I ain't got nothing. Man, I'm telling you, there's something different about it. You know, and, and it's it's amazing because, you know, like with, you know, when it comes down to being resourceful, persevering, you know, it's not just about, you know, there's a lot of things that that are that like really built into this where I'm at now, because when I say I speak bank and ease, ge- geek and ease and contractor knees, I'm serious because, you know, you and I both know on real estate development, pre-selling and marketing, all that comes in play real easy, like it's helpful, um, especially when you can leave with revenue, right? You know, get better lending terms. You know, it's like, how can we, you know, it's all of it built to here, like, you know, being able to bust through the smoke with contractors and all the nonsense that they love to throw around all the time. Sometimes they think they are gods, but it's like, hey, look, let's just humble them down. Let's just a little couple of hours, you know, and let's actually come, everyone come back down to level earth real quick. And it's like, it's interesting because all of this stuff that tried to destroy me is what built me to here. When it feels like it's falling apart, it's actually falling in place. And, you know, I mean, I'll just flat out, it's just nothing, like, there's nothing else besides my relationship with Jesus Christ that that got me to here. You know, everything else is fantastic. There's a lot of stuff that, you know, with them having the right, you know, right mentors around, right? You know, being able to not share your vision with other people that don't align with it. That was one of my biggest problems. You know, I get super excited about sharing the vision with just everybody. And then people would, you know, I'd, you know things would happen and then things would fall apart and all of that. But, nah, you know, let the work speak for me. And it's interesting because, you know, it's like, how can I, you know, with all the social capital, look at what I, what a resource list, look at the resources that I have. And it's like me, I had a lot of relationships. Cash broke, but man, I was socially rich. Cashing on it. And that's what's interesting is because when I shifted over, like I, man, I'm going to be doing this for the next 20 to 50 years unless God says otherwise. I do not care. And it's like, and it's interesting because when when we study, you know, doubt and confidence are built the same way, right? You know, and it's, you know, one thing that with with pain, pain is an identifier. It's like the buoy, like, you know, like how, I don't know if anybody's a Marvel nerd like me, like Daredevil, when he, like, he can't see anything, he can sonar the thing like a submarine. <laughs> you know, it's like, you know, like, that's what pain is. It's a buoy, it's a sonar, it's an, it's an identifier because that pain is in, in reflection to that calling also too, because if you can reverse engineer that and then identify, okay, how did, how, hey, how did that happen? And, hey, how did I let that happen? That's the key question. How did I let that happen? Focusing on what I could control. And that's it. And it's interesting because like, holy smokes, man. <laughs> like, there are so many things that are happening right now. And it's all because of that mission. You know, I'm, I'm just a guy who obeyed God, you know, obedience, better than sacrifice. And Man, there was a lot of stuff that was taking place during that all like that like rocky area, right? Because that was because of a bad business partnership. Dude snaked me for six figures in contracts. Not found that after I fired him. And, and it's like it's interesting because there's a lot of stuff that because I was right when things were getting started up, like when I met with you with like with the, uh, the other gentleman that I was working with. Um, and it's interesting because the guy that came out to the, the retreat with, but it's like. Yeah, it's interesting because when it comes down to it, it's about, I mean, it's all about relationships. You're one relationship away, relationship above or this way, regardless. Like, it's interesting because when I was, I mean, I, I had this big, massive vision to cancel the housing crisis that, that God put in my heart to do. And I'm like, okay, <laughs> just one guy from Alabama, like, huh? And, and that's where I'm like, here's the mission. How can we work together on it? You know, I'm really good at not just marketing, but branding and negotiation, you know, finding a win-win that truly makes sense for people. Because if we can have it make sense, you know, like what are the real problems, right? Like what actually does make the most sense? Like really, truly, not just from, oh, that looks fantastic. Because everyone's like, man, I'm telling you, 
when I was productizing companies for people and I was there punching back, like there was all they were like saying, we gotta go to luxury. We're gonna get this to go build luxury. I'm like, okay, but these people over here are struggling. Hmm. I was determined to build something that I needed when I was 17. Because I mean, heck, I mean, I'm like literally I'm one outlier of like 50 guys that were in the program with me. None of them have come like done anything. That recidivism rate, that recidivism rate is insane. Um, you know, it's like there's got to be something that changes, and it's like, I just it's a, it's a big, big plan. It's not just you know, it's not just you know, building buildings, right? Yeah, it's also too. How can we come up with a plan that makes sense, not just psychologically, but also spiritually, emotionally, mentally, right? You know, and psychologically, it's the same thing. But but it's like, how can we? You know, because that's what that, that's what that was the biggest thing. Like, like resourcefulness, one relationship away, just staying steady, you know, and all of that poured into this. I mean, hey, it's I never thought that you know uh, negotiating with my my wife and I, like my wife and I's wedding venue, that it would result in us expensing our wedding, but it did. But, but it's like, yeah, you know, it's like how how in the world? And well, I'll say this: from that downturn, I didn't let my history become my identity. That's the biggest. Love it. So, so inspiring. Yeah. So inspiring because I actually, you know, like I said, I got to witness that as it unfolded and the lows, the highs. And uh, anyway, very inspiring how far you've come in such a short amount of time. And uh, it just shows that what somebody can do if they, they just put their mind to it and what you've overcome is like massive odds. So I'm just like, so proud of you. Thanks, man. Yeah. So any questions for Jeremy? Let me see my screen. So I got a question. You left them speechless, but I got a question. Where do you see yourself five years from now with all these things you have going on? What, what, uh, where do you see yourself? Where I see myself and where I'm going to be are going to be two different things. I have no, <laughs> um, at this rate of speed, <laughs> it's been, man, I, I, yeah, at this rate of speed, I mean, I'm, I'm just going to throw something out there outlandish. I'm going to have business partners in every every county of the, of the nation, and both nonprofits and for profit. You know, and affordable housing to luxury developments because, like, we're going to not just solve the housing problem, but also very make a massive dent in it. But also, too, we're going to solve the workforce development problem too. I'm still in the trades. I still on landscape. I have landscaping business. I've got. You know, other companies that we have ed like education platforms in the trades, like I'm, I am a, I am about that life when it comes to trades. <laughs> Blue collars are going to be in my blood until I die. But it's like for the next five years, it's like I want to, I want to help people start businesses. I want them to, to get inspired to say, look, man, if I, they can do that, then I can do it. Like I'm living proof. And it's like, how can we, how can we, like, really truly solve that gap? So, man, I'm telling you, like, I want to, I want nonprofits to think out of the box. I want them to really put like we talk about all this all the time, but it's like let's put our let's let's put our head down and really yeah. dig in because if we're gonna if we're gonna talk about it, but we don't have the roadmap, what good is it? You know, it's that like that's part visionary, like, I'm part visionary, part mechanic. So we keep talking about pie in the sky, it's gonna annoy me. That's just how I'm wired, it's how I'm built. <laughs> so the next five years, man. I mean, I, I see, I see having not just partners all the way across the United States, but also in Canada, in you know, in Africa, and other other countries, because you know that's the kind of discussions that are being had. And it's like, like Canada's what ten year backlog? It's crazy. And it's like, heck, I mean, let's let's. Yeah, here's the thing. And, I, and this is this is like, <laughs> my, I grew up thinking this, but I'm like, man, that that's really harsh, you know. But it's at the end of the day, it's the truth. If there's no solution yet, it's not because you haven't found it. It's well, I'll say this: if there's no solution yet, it's not because it doesn't exist. It's because you haven't found it yet. Mm -hmm. And and that's yeah. really, I mean, that's that's the that's that's this in my DNA. And I'm like, hey, okay, but how can we make it work? Okay, if that's the case, how far how far is the technology off a couple years down the road? Right? What's the band-aid? Like, how can we make it work? You know, and so yeah, man, I'm like, I'm gonna have partners in every every goals of every country that's friendly with me. Um to, there and to be able to help me make a massive dent and to you know have you know people that are coming from overseas to be able to to help with different areas of our economy as well you know so yeah man my big big vision man big vision wow that, that is a huge vision and i think it's really interesting because like you said you're part uh dreamer 
and part uh, mechanic. And that's, that's a really good combination because you can think really, really big, but then you can actually implement and take those little steps that are necessary to make the big, to get to the top there. And so. Throw ADHD we'll into it. And that's a huh. good combo for sure. <laughs> Any questions for Jeremy? Go ahead, team Gad. I love your vision. I love to hear what you're saying. Um, it makes us not feel quite so crazy because we have <laughs> huge vision. Both of us have huge visions um, for within within the United States and overseas. I, my parents were missionaries in Africa when I was a child. So I have awesome. that Africa connection and I want to do something in Africa. What part? Um, in Sierra Leone, West Africa. Oh, cool. Yeah, I've got friends in uh, Leo State, Nigeria, and my wife's from Kenya. Okay. All right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We share some um, family over there. So yeah, that, that that Africa connection is 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 big, and there, there's so much need over there, so much need in so many places. Um, yeah. But my question was, uh, so kudos on your dream, and and I know if you dream big and God put that dream in you, and God's gonna open the door for it to happen. So I truly believe that. Right, even when it doesn't look, it looks impossible. With God, all things are possible. So I, yeah, it's gonna happen. Um, I was wondering. Uh, Dave and I like to watch, there's a show called um, Container Container Wars. Container Wars, yeah. where, they, where, they make, where they make small, tiny homes out of these out of those shipping containers. Yeah. It, um, do you all do any, just curious, because they, they talk about how there's so many shipping containers that just pile up and oh, yeah. there's a waste uh, that they're, they're trying to make something good out of the containers. Do you ever do anything? Have you done anything with those containers? Oh, God, yeah. That's actually one of our primaries. Yeah, I've got builders all over the United States to help with any kind of backlogs. I even raw containers too. Actually, I have a client over in Oklahoma. We just got a container, raw container shipped over to her, uh, her, her job site. So, and the ones that are modular too. Uh, we get, we get so creative with them. Like I, we actually, the floor, so the floor plan that I put in front of the housing authority here in Huntsville was the container plex in Texas that we're putting together. And they loved it. One of the builders is in Decatur and they can create, they can manufacture, fully set it out up to code, like full on, like 1600 to 3200 square feet a week wow and what's wild is it's like we're planning some cool stuff with that you know so it's like that's one of the builders but also too we've got i've got a lot of them um on standby so that way we can serve the need because i mean shoot you talk about veteran housing yeah all day because i mean we we run through the electrical plan the plumbing plan the whole entire site the site plan i mean my background in landscaping i'm like all right, let's get the topo survey. Let's go ahead and look at the watershed, gutter systems, and the slab. If we're going to add solar, are we going with ESG credits? Are we going for density credits? Are we what grants are we using for educational, you know, plant programs, all that kind of stuff? Tying all that into the containers, you know, everything, literally. And it's like indicators right there. And even too, there's some that I work with in Texas and other places, just in fact, like Utah. I mean, everything, man. And it's it's nuts. So yeah, from raw to completely turnkey, it's all available. Yeah, that's amazing what they can do with those containers from single families, even multifamily to office buildings and everything else with storage. the containers. It's amazing. Storage, storage. yes. Yeah. <laughs> Businesses, business and personal and everything. So it's yeah. amazing. So and, yeah. and they're not expensive to uh, obtain. Nah. Mm -hmm. no. You just gotta make sure you reinforce and build them up the code though. That's the biggest thing. That's that's where I I mean a lot of container home builders. Oh, Lord have mercy. Bless their heart. Um, and so we we help on financing on on helping them with that with the sister company, Tiny Home Funding. Um, so that yeah, we do a lot of that with the man. And that's I kid you not, like yeah, there's a lot of people jumping into it. Just like anything else, bandwidth is number one problem. And backlogs. Oh, so that's where it's like, how can we? I mean, I I ask them like, all the time, I get referrals all the time in that space. And they're like, hey man. We need funding or whatever. We got a couple, we got this big, big thing going on. I'm like, all right, cool. If I load you down with 5,000 homes, like, or no, it's 5,000, it's over aggressive. I tell them, I'll say, if I load you down with 150 homes, how fast can you make them? And they're like, not fast enough. Um, <laughs> like time. But there's there's ones that definitely are jumping in that are really getting at it because they want to go at scale. And that's where that, that's where, that's where you want to be at, you know, operating at scale. And also up the code because a lot of times, if you're not careful, if like, oh man, they're, they'll tell you everything under the sun that you want to hear. But I promise you, sometimes it can, it is unfortunate that when 
they get a teardown order if they get an inspection because it's not 100% modular, it can really backfire. So definitely want to be careful you go with, but definitely, yeah, that's where we've, we've got a lot of people we've vetted and painstakingly vetted. <laughs> Oh, wait, well, we have the blood, sweat, and tears in a bucket in the back. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. But yeah, there's a lot that, I mean, there's so much, like you said, that can be done. I mean, shoot, single family homes. I mean, heck, we're, you know, um, it's amazing. I mean, shoot, you can you can do a single family home and do a four bedroom, four bath and flip that into like literally four different doors with the help of sheetrock. And I mean, next to you, now you've got four doors. They're sectioned off of their own bathroom and everything else, literally, because it's 320 square foot for you know, each bedroom. And yeah, you can see you can do it whole entire courtyard with the overhang with some sit panel technologies and wood frames and everything else. And boom, there you go. The whole entire gathering area. Come on. Like, it's fun. <laughs> it's fun. <laughs> you can get very creative with them. Oh, my gosh. Awesome. Yeah. It's awesome. Absolutely. Yeah. And we throw them on a trailer, too. That's sort of the RV asset. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, those are right there. I mean, they say you ever see a 320 square foot open floor plan RV? I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> Works really good for mobile home parks too, by the way. Oh, awesome. I have a connection for you, by the way, uh, Jeremy. I've got uh, somebody I was actually just talking to him today, coincidentally, and he does container homes uh, in Canada. So oh, good, good conversation. So if you remind me, I'll connect you. And by the way, Wolfpack, he's going to come in to speak in, I think, uh, May. We're just working on the exact date so um but remind me uh, yeah, yeah. yeah, especially if you want to expand into canada he might be a good uh oh, contact for you i can i even too can help him with supplies and home man there's a lot right. a lot of ways to help with that. have fun with that absolutely man that's why i love connecting people because you never know what that could lead to right so mm -hmm. i'll definitely do that any other questions for jeremy they're really quiet but here here's how you get them to ask a question i just say I, I give them, oh, here we go. Jenny. Oh. Five, four. <laughs> Jenny is muted and I don't see her video, but I do see her hand up. So that counts for something. Uh oh. Oh, I'm not going to yawn. Jenny. Oh. Mm -hmm. All right. Any other questions while we wait for Jenny? Because I don't know what happened to her, but I do see her hand up. Oh, sorry. Can you hear me? Oh, now we can. Yes. Go oh, okay. Ahead. Sorry about that. Yeah, my camera's not working. <laughs> um, but anyways, hi everyone. And I sort of jumped in late. Apologies. So I didn't quite hear um, exactly what what it is. You know, you are doing. I sort of have an idea. But um, you did mention some tilt uh, panels that you make already prefab kind of thing, and then you can sort of you know obviously assemble it on site and. Uh, you can probably configure your own layout really oh, if you yeah. wanted to um and so you had talked about global do you mm -hmm. ship to canada and yes yeah. oh, okay so um whereabouts have you been shipping panels to well or... we can we haven't we haven't had any really i mean a lot of stuff in canada there's been a lot of desire and things but we're i mean we're shipping them from you know from different countries to you know, from taiwan based on the glass or like you know if it's you know if it's raw containers or the tilt up we'll ship it from china port to port so i've got my business partner takes care of all those logistics on that uh but yeah i mean so the issue with canada has been because of boots on the ground mike i think you're frozen brother um, but um, but with the with the with Canada, what happens is there's uh, finally you know got a strong connection with boots on the ground that's over there. But that's why when my connection with the container guy that's over there, that's where when it comes to being able to have you know because of the the whole entire the process with a lot of stuff, a lot of things I've been working on is in the United States, and then also getting conversations started over in Africa as well. Uh, but that's where with Canada. I mean, we I mean I can ship to anywhere, any kind of a, any kind of any port or any railway to be able to get things over to people. Um, so that way, I mean, the tilt-up concrete would, just, would come from China or would come from anywhere else to be able to have that ready. But those would come with electric, electrical plumbing, insulation, R40, aircrete insulation, I mean, any kind of R rating that's needed up there. But uh, mm -hmm. we can have those shipped in scale as well. I just, you know, in Canada, I mean, heck, uh, a lot of people are like, yeah, well, there's a big need. I'm like, okay, cool, let's do something about it. They're like, mm -hmm. <laughs> and so yeah no it's been um yeah I mean, heck i'd love to do something with you there because that and mike there as well because of the need but it's been you know, a lot of that red tape yeah as far as it getting through like the the heiresses i think is what it is the the process and so yeah yeah no i mean we have the ability to ship it anywhere so mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, it's interesting. I mean, I, I, I like the concept of modular um, mm-hmm. and, and, you know, either that or finding a piece of property and coming in and, you know, it's, it's up in two weeks kind of thing. Well, the kind of bringing up the, kind of bring up uh, the speed on that stuff. Well, because we will, we're the tiny home plug is a, a strategy and design firm and they can development space. So like, well, that's where we'll go through, uh, we'll put the consultancy in the development space. And that's where we pull together a lot of stuff. We'll serve as a project manager. And so we've got a sister company that we have as far as material sourcing from, raw containers, turn, like everything, any kind of raw material to turnkey units, including manufactured homes. So it's like as much as possible, like let's have as much open inventory as far as like, like materials, as far as red tape, if they're locally. Because some counties in some areas you know, in the United States, they demand that it's simple on site or you know, at least 50%, right? And so it's like, how creative can we get? Yeah, tilt up concrete has been very, it's been, it's been a little old school, you know, from, I mean, it's, it's old school here in the United States, but a lot of stuff, you know, I mean, overseas, there's a lot of tilt up concrete panels. And so that, you know, even tilt up concrete, we've got those at 95 bucks a square foot, you know, all like all the way in. And so it's like, how could we get creative containers if they are modular and they're turnkey, if you, have, you know, topped out 150 a square foot? Um, you know, no, well, it depends on the amenities though too. Um, but it's like, how can we get, you know, how can we really configure these things? And so that way, you know, heck, you even see the container that the silt of concrete panels are shipped over in, right? Yeah, you can too, repurpose that whole thing. You know, mm-hmm. it's like, how creative can we get, really, truly? In places like Jamaica and other, other areas in South America, too. I mean, shoot, it's just, I lived in South America for a year doing mission work. You know, and it's like how, you know, what broke my heart was a lack of sustainability. You know, and that's one of the biggest things that, that, that sucks because it's like a lot of folks go overseas and do Band-Aid work and they don't really do any surgery. You know, do any like root issue like stuff. And so that's where... Yeah, you know, like so. Yeah, I'm all I'm all for Canada. I, I have been waiting. I've been wanting to have some like consistent people there because a lot of people promise big stuff and they're like, I don't know, I just got busy. I'm like, okay, cool. That wasn't a priority. No problem. Love you. And that's not a big deal, but it happens. But yeah, no, we can ship that from anywhere, depending on if it, even if it's the United States, if it's manufactured in the United States, and ship it over there as well. You know, just cross the border. You know, just do the do logistic pickup. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, like like you said, I guess it, I guess the um, building and the materials would have to meet our building codes oh, yeah. and such. Um, but yeah, uh, yeah, absolutely. Okay, yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, that that's interesting. Um, I I just out of curiosity, I do have a question. Your your yeah. tiny homes. Um, hmm? is is there have you ever thought of ever doing a like a, a converting a trailer? Um, Oh yeah, trailer, trailer park into. Oh yeah, we're doing that right now. Oh, you are. Are you? Oh yeah. Well, okay, gotcha. that's cool. Yeah, we've got. We actually, so I have manufactured homes available. So not just one. I'm not just traditional double wides, but outfitting them and doing a premium version of mobile home parks. One hundred percent. Now that way, it, it works for assisted living. You know, and also too, or foster care housing, right? Because there's so many different ways to be able to be able to just like, cross purpose those things. Why not? And mobile home parks, man, golly, they're a gold mine. Mobile home parks plus self storage, slam dunk. But also, too, man, the biggest thing with a lot of mobile homes, um, a lot of people are they're having a hard time getting them. We got sixty day turnaround time. A lot of people, if they go through, um, uh, hey Mike, I think you're still frozen, brother. But, um, but that's where even too, like when it comes down to like, like being able to. With manufacturing homes, we've got them under 400 square foot, all the way up to over 2,000 square feet. And that's not a dumb, I got a disclaimer, sorry. That's not a 2,000 square foot mobile home on, a, on wheels. That's 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 a big booty Judy. That's not what we're talking about. But that is where the 2,000 square foot would be on a permanent slab. So we've got a lot of different options available. So that way people can be, you know, they can really be flexible and shift gears on stuff. I mean, it could be from the covenants, conditions, and restrictions of the property to red tape or bureaucracy that they don't like the paint color of the paint. So we're able to stay yeah. flexible and stuff. So I, th- I think for a development to be uh, successful, if, if it is, you know, you're combining affordable housing, would you also mix it in with m- mid-income and, you know, so you've got a balance and not that, you know, it, it's not all um, affordable or or you know, homeless people, because then that's just going to create a different community. Is that? Oh, not, yeah. Well, that... and that's, yeah, a lot of that, you know, when we're doing affordable housing, there's always going to be like the NIMBY mindset, not in my backyard. And so you want to have it a balance, right? I mean, because we're doing stuff that are, some things that are mixed use, 
but also too, when it comes down to like, balance, like, like you said, balancing it out, you want to be able to, so that's the tricky part. You want to be able to not just balance it, but also separate things. So that way there's a, like, there's a clear distinction of like, you know, because like when you do a transitional living development, you don't need to put as much into that as you would a workforce housing, right? And depending on the demographic of who you're going to serve, you know? And so it's like, and the balance in the community, it's going to make sense, you know? And so that's where you definitely want to be able to create it where, you know, where you develop it at. It's going to, of course, the surrounding community and make sure it's up to snuff, you know, because you don't want to put, you know, you don't want to, I mean, there's going to be restrictions for affordable housing based on who you're serving, you know? And so that's going to dictate some of the direction of the project too and the placement of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just because where I'm from, um, I'm in Canada and mm -hmm. um, in the Okanagan. And a lot of the, um, there's a lot of homeless people and um, they're apparently, you know, they're coming to our, you know, local communities, but the um, BC housing has bought, you know, like three motels uh, mm -hmm. al along the, you know, we're very tourist oriented mm -hmm. and they're going to be converting them. But, cool. you know, um, there are some homes that are already there. But then, you know, right outside, you see people, you know, in shopping carts and tweaking out still, you, you know, like, I mean, I, I guess the help to help them is not there, like the infrastructure to to support and help them. But, yeah, it's, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't catch up. Oh, but, but then, you, you know, so, you know, where's the balance where, you know, these three motels that are going to be coming up and being converted? Hmm. I don't, you know, there, there's got to, whether that's your city, your, your, your city planners or your, you know, municipality or your county, you know, maybe they're the, they're the people who has to, you know, step up and, you know, implement some type of help or council system without it, you know, turning into, you know, a, a block of, uh, you know, a lot of homeless people, you know, again, like, Boy, and that's, and that's the, that's the tough part about it too, you know, and that's where it's like, oh, and I've met a lot of people who are burned out helping the homeless. And that's a real thing. And, and I'll say that I'm gonna lead with that, but then clean it up here in a second, because, you know, over the past several decades, it's always been like, well, we need to build something that's going to last the test of time, but also have solid equity as far as, you know, like what, you know, what that asset class is, you know, as far as what's being built. Part of the reason why they're doing a lot of commercial purchases because it's already there, right? And they need to stick people in there so that way they can keep the vouchers that were, you know, as far as Canada goes. I mean, keep those, you know, those certs there, certificates there in that county, or not in that county, in that region, right? Mm -hmm. And so, what you don't talk about? But like, um, but being able to um, you know, keep it in that area because then what happens is there's also the other side of it too. A lot of and what I've learned, what I've learned a lot with you know affordable housing is that it's very fragmented in some degrees. And it really is, and you know a lot of some folks are. Well, I'll say this: those everyone who does development are focused on the people. Those folks, everyone who's in development, focus on different things, right? I was going to talk about tongue twister there. Sorry, <laughs> <laughs> it's been a long day. But um, but that's where it's like everyone's got what they're focused on. What's a priority to them, right? And that was one of the biggest things I noticed was that there's the flight plan. When it comes to affordable housing, what is the incentive, but also to what is that person's deep rooted issue, right? You know, there's a lot of things where they just stick them in there based on what they already what they've known from the past. They expect them to act suddenly different, like it's a like it's a miracle, right? Eh, come on, you and I both know when you like you and I both have stuff we've uh, we've unlearned. Huh. we were not the people we were three years ago right and yeah hopefully <laughs> right and it's like hey, but like it took us a little bit to get it you know it's like i mean shoot i mean how many times have we known something like we knew it like this, like we were first told it 10 years ago and then it automatically just goes like bam and just looks like an aha moment oh my gosh you know it's like that revelation right it's like you know, just that really like you can feel the chain being yanked on the light bulb in your brain right <laughs> and it's like that's where it's like, how can we create something that's going to incentivize people to do better, right? And that's where a lot of things are lacking, you know? And it's like, how can we how can we create something that's not just a hotel, right? And then just, you know, take them mm -hmm. out and go find a job. Yes, that is needed sometimes, especially those who are in different parts of their life, right? And, you know, it's like that old saying, if you don't humble yourself, life will humble you or God will humble you right back, you know? And just because of, you know, consequences, you know? And I mean, shoot, even too, it's just a matter of what, you know, your action reaction. And it's like, at the end of the day, 
Yeah, it's like when it comes down to those infrastructure builds, how can we create an event center, right? Or a learning center that's around it? Each of a bird will try to administrative input, right? And data input. Mm -hmm. How can they have yeah. learn a trade that's applicable globally, right? And it's like gives them a sense of that momentum, you know? Because, I mean, shoot, at the end of the day, if you stick them in there and help them expect something different. Like if you, if you encase an apple tree and say, start growing oranges. disappoint you <laughs> you know it's like but it's like if you say if you give that apple tree that that environment is to start growing more apples on what it can already do then you're going to get amazing things out of that and that that fruit being they're gifting right and it's like there's a lot of things that are just thrown up and just hopefully just to put them in there and just to solve one problem of the vouchers right and just one of those things having a roof over your head be grateful right but it also has bed bugs in it like it's got, you know, I mean, everything, Roach Motels, I've been in all of them. I've been in more like halfway houses that look like crack houses than I care to admit. Because at the end of the day, like, I mean, it's in, it's insane. Yeah, it's a, how can we make the numbers work, right? You know, not just for the initial infrastructure build, but also sustainability maintenance wise. You know, and that's part of why, like, oh, I'm in Canada, I mean, I want to get so many kit homes up there, it's insane. Like, I mean, oh my gosh, like I want to be able to have light frame steel homes that have R40 rating insulation up there, 840 square foot, two bedroom, one bathroom, get them up there, 80 on a boat. I want to get them up there and assembled in three weeks. Like that's what can happen. <laughs> you know, it's like, how can we solve that problem? But also to have allow, like have that cost to build, you know, not super extremely expensive, but also too, to be able to, um, ah, there it is. But uh, but that way uh, that way be able to um, that way be able to have you know not just the cost to build but the holding cost being the labor cost the permitting all that kind of stuff not be that excruciating right because that I mean Canada from what my understanding is a ten year backlog which is heartbreaking like absolutely heartbreaking and so yeah that's why I mean should even see like financing I've got you know I've like tiny we have a family office that we work with that wants everything Canada like they're dying to have people to do stuff and that's the kicker and that's the kicker with the vision literally and filling in the gap here's the plan here's our little sliver of importance right here and then you know the material and then whoop, over on the funding side but the most important piece is you or anybody that's got that vision, right? And then we coordinate with general contractors, boots on the ground, helping you bring together a team for that project being its own entity and having the right experience on that board of advisors or ownership or whatever we do with that. So that way you can push forward because at the end of the day, hey, we have to gamify affordable housing. We have to. Mm -hmm. We have to gamify affordable housing because at the end of the day, we, like, we're not giving anyone any tangible targets. Like We're just saying, hey, good luck. It doesn't do anybody any good. So it's like, how can we create this development that when they, when, with their intake, right? Like, think back to automation, right? Onboarding. Yeah, same thing. Affordable housing. How can we have somebody that goes through and they can, you know, be supplied something like a phone for like via a grant, right? But, you know, they have to be able to, there's a different, you know, there's different stipulations with it, but it's like, how can we give them the ability to access learning, like education, financial literacy, learning a trade, all these different things, and then giving them a chance to get a job? You know, even though they may be struggling with certain things right away, that doesn't fall off right, right automatically. But how can we, like a law of displacement, when you put your hand in a bucket of water, that water goes like that. Yeah, matter replaces matter. But when they don't feel like they matter, and you replace it with something that helps them feel like they matter, the same principle. And yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I think it would be, I think it would be so cool to find some like big acreage honestly like you know on the outskirts of town uh oh, yeah. you know you've got your garden your vegetables you know you got horses you've got you know um whatever training facilities there and that's you know where you can line up you know put all these little homes or something and the only thing is you know when they're in the city or in the town that's where i don't they i think that it's harder to get well because you know you have well you, you know you, you have outside influences there to incent them you know incentivize them or whatever they you know for them yeah. to kind of carry on and you know continue to go to not get better so if it were someplace you know on a big ranch yeah. <laughs> or you know that was there you know and this is where they clean well, up 
And I will say the big ranch though is that one of the biggest things for any kind of like affordable housing is access accessibility to resources. So like if their job is going to be on the ranch and there's like produce being grown there, sustainability is going to be the biggest thing. Um, and thank you, Yuki, for coming in. I appreciate you. Um, but yeah, and that's where like that's where this that's the number one thing that they're going to ask about. If it's on the ranch, how can they get to and from their job? Are you willing to take on transportation as that? So. Those are kind of things that kind of keep in the back of the mind. This ranch is fantastic, especially for those coming out of like sex trafficking and human trafficking, big time, because that way they can separate. And now there's a there's a lot of there there's a lot of um, there are a lot of funds that are available to help with those different services because that is something that that definitely needs to be done. So that the ranch list definitely serve certain demographics, but those who are who need like accessibility to jobs, and they just have to like fill a couple of gaps on that, be it like transportation, some other stuff. Just wanted to add that in there for you. Mm -hmm. but yeah, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. I, I kind of was thinking of um, you know, a place where people can clean up. Mm -hmm. No, yeah, no, that's really good. That gives it separates them from that. Like from any kind of outside, you know, kind of issues, and that's where you can tell on the ranch you can incorporate corporate housing in there too. So that way, you're that way you can have on-site uh, living for any kind of any case workers or anybody that's gonna that needs to live there on site for many, like for for helping and also protection too, big time. Yeah, totally. Yeah, especially, right? huh? yeah no, I, I'm saying yeah, totally. Like that would. Yeah. Yeah. And too, like if it's like a short-term rental, you know, that component of it, there's people that are you know that are pre-vetted. And then want to come and stay and be able to then, you know, be like cycle out and just come to like, you know, travel through that are, you know, that are pre-qualified, right? Yeah, you know, pre-qualified, but you know, pre-vetted. And then that way you can go ahead and, uh, you know, bring in other groups because volunteers is the other half of that too, right? Huh. Mm -hmm. Man. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. <laughs> okay. I, I, oh Lord, that, that hits deep in my soul, you know, and that's part of like, Oh, I did nonprofit work all the time. And I, that was one of the biggest issues, like getting people to see the vision and then just jump into it. Right. And it's like, bah, <laughs> how can we make it make sense? Right. And so it's, that's where it's like getting creative on that business model, especially being able to keep the protection there, but also to, to be able to, to that way people feel comfortable because the last thing you want or anybody that's, you know, especially that kind of, that kind of development out on the ranch, you don't want anybody coming in scouting. Right. Mm -hmm. And so that's just being able to, you know, set up those parameters definitely. But oh my gosh, yeah, especially with the equestrian component of it. Oh, boy, have mercy. Woo! <laughs> Man, dude, talk about that being on the resume. <laughs> Up there. Heck yeah. <laughs> anyway, it says I took care of horses. They're like. <laughs> Lots of land in Canada. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, cool. Okay, thanks. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> Good stuff. Any other questions for Jeremy? Going once, going twice. This is how you get them to raise their hand. Right. Going three times. I can't believe it. Normally they jump in at the last second, but <laughs> hey, there, you did oh, Team Gad. I knew it was going to happen. Team Gad, go ahead. I had, couldn't disappoint you, Mike. I, you I just want to know the, the best way to, to contact Jeremy. Uh, oh yeah, web, chat. through your website is that? Oh, is that I threw my what? email in there. Yeah, you can go to the website too. Actually, uh, if you is go to the website, you can go to the contact page. Um, just check off all the boxes. It says that uh, works as a menu, so that way, ideally, in a perfect world, if you like, just as far as amenities and all that type of development, just check off all those boxes. My uh, calendar is the last question, so that way we can grab the time for next week. Okay, nice. so go to the, go to the website. That's the best way. Yeah, to yeah. You can go to right here, but I put my email in the chat as well. Okay. To email you. Okay. All right. Just want to make because we definitely need to connect offline. Yeah, absolutely. Actually, I'm still coming. Yes. <laughs> oh, here, I'll put my cell number in here as well. So that way. Um... Ooh, we're going to be fortunate enough to get your cell number. Woohoo. 256 two, five, something, right? Of course. <laughs> <laughs> For people watching the recording, it's 256 975 7095. 256 975 seven zero nine five and if you text me do not call me first text me your name and and your email how you saw it and i'm still going to send you to the website anyways to go to book the call <laughs> so but definitely yeah definitely reach out and text with me because we definitely that's my direct line i don't i don't have any i don't need any point members anything like that and no calls at two in the morning this boy needs some sleep every now and then oh gosh yeah <laughs> <laughs> there you go
Um, any other questions? Thank you. Thank you. Uh, going once, going twice. Sold. Jeremy, thanks so much for hanging out with us and discussing, you know, such an important uh, topic. And I love what you're doing. I love how far you've come in such a short amount of time. Just keep it up and uh, we'll keep in touch. And like I said, I've got some connections that I want to uh, put you in touch with. So just if I forget, which when you get to be my age, sometimes happens, uh, remind me. But otherwise, I will uh, definitely. I write something. everything down. And what was that? Sorry. I said, I write everything down. So you're oh, good. Well, I'm glad somebody did. <laughs> there you go. All right, Jeremy. Thanks again. Wolfpack, have an amazing night and we'll see y'all soon. Thank you. Thanks, Bye. Mike. Thank, Thank you, Jeremy. Adios. Bye. Bye. See you later.